connecting with a robot to keep you healthy. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Dr. Corey Kidd. He is the CEO at Catalia Health. Welcome, Dr. Kidd. Thanks for having me. What does Catalia Health do, and what prompted you to start the company? Catalia Health is a chronic disease care management company, so we help patients across a variety of different diseases to stay on therapy and out of the hospital. And I have been working at the intersection of healthcare and technology for well over two decades now. And you know, in large part, what motivates the work that I do and what we're doing at Catalia Health is understanding how we solve challenges that uh, impact a lot of people in healthcare and find scalable, successful ways to do that. Just over a year ago, Toss Bendy of ZDNet chronicled your release of software that pairs with Meibu. Tell us about the current state of the health platform and Meibu, its centerpiece. So Meibu is the cute little robot that you can see over my shoulder here. And that is the main interface that we use to talk to patients. So this actually sits in our patients' homes. And you know, obviously there's some technology involved in what we do. There's a robot there. And a lot of the technology portion of our company is focused on the software. And that's the artificial intelligence algorithms that are generating a conversation on the fly for that person at that point in time. And so the, the foundation here is really about not technology, but about psychology and medicine. So how do we really create an engaging interaction with a person and how do we make that engaging over time? In effect, building up a relationship between the robot and the person who's using it. And then what we do is we build applications, if you will, on top of that, around particular disease states. So Meibu is out right now with heart failure patients. Uh, they've been using it since earlier this year. And we've got a couple other things coming out later this year. And so from a patient perspective, this is really simple to use. You know, despite all the technology here, it's just a conversation back and forth. How does Meibu detect behavior change in patients? So we start with a couple of things when we're building a new application. So, you know, I just was just talking about heart failure, one of the things that we're working in. But, you know, across the board, we look at, you know, what do we want to help people do? You know, what are the things that ideally a patient would do along their journey to get better or to manage a disease? And then we look at, you know, for many people, why doesn't that happen today? You know, there are challenges for most of us when we're actually dealing with something like this. And, and what are those barriers? What are those difficulties? And so what's happening is through those conversations every day, much like a doctor or nurse would if they were able to talk to this person, you know, how's it going? <laughs> That's the start of many conversations. Uh, and based on, you know, that person's answer, maybe we can go off in a number of different directions, right? Maybe I'm having a great day. And, uh, you know, it's just give me a little tip or reminder about something that might be helpful. Maybe I'm not doing so well today. She's going to ask why, right? So it's not just about if I'm doing well or not. You know, particularly when I'm not, well, what's going on? What's the problem? And how can she help, you know, give me some information that might be useful and relevant to me right now? But then a key piece of this also is what's happening on the back end. So this is not a standalone solution. We work with doctors and nurses and pharmacists. And so, you know, ultimately what this is about is helping that person be better connected back to their care team, the people who are providing medical care for them. The health platform is built on a cloud-based backend. What functions and capability does the cloud actually offer? So, you know, in order to get that connectivity back to, back to the clinicians, you know, we have to have a channel to do that. Uh, so Meibu is sending all of the information that she learns through that conversation. So the data that we get out of that, as opposed to say any audio or video, is going back to the back end where we can analyze that. And there are a number of different things that we can analyze here. You know, so we're understanding what's going on with that patient and when we should get information back to a doctor or a nurse or a pharmacist so that they can provide a follow-up call or schedule a visit with that patient. But we're also using that to learn and learn about how we can improve what we're doing with patients so that maybe it gets better over time, whether that be across you know, a small group of patients or everyone with a particular disease or all the patients out there that we're supporting, you know, we're constantly trying to work to make this better. The first disease state that Catalia Health tackled is congestive heart failure. You mentioned that earlier. Why did you select that condition and how does the platform serve both the patient and the medical team? So the core platform that we've built is really about engaging the patient, like I was talking about. And then the particular applications are really driven by the needs of you know, our customers. So we work a lot with healthcare systems and with big pharma 
to provide programs that will scale across you know, large numbers of patients. So congestive heart failure is a huge issue in the US, in other parts of the world. There are a lot of people dealing with this on an everyday basis. And you know, while any one part of dealing with it, you know, taking a medication, following a particular diet, checking certain things, any one of those may seem easy. Uh, but if I'm a new heart failure patient, then that can be overwhelming. And so maybe it was really a useful tool for a person who's been diagnosed to better understand their disease state, to better track everything they need to do. And, you know, as you asked about getting that information back to the clinicians so that they can ultimately provide better care for those patients. What role did your experience at MIT's Media Lab play in the design and interface for Maybu? Oh, a lot. <laughs> so I spent six and a half years doing my master's and PhD at the Media Lab. And when I started there, this was uh, back in 2001. And so the concept of interactive robots or social robots was very new. And I ended up doing this whole series of studies trying to understand what's going on when someone is interacting with one of these. You know, of course, these studies involve technology. You know, I had to build and program the robots, but it was really all about psychology. And the best way to quickly explain you know, what we found there is why so many of us spend time you know, doing business or seeing patients or in educational settings face-to-face -face in person. You know, we get intuitively that when we're sitting with someone in the same room, there's a difference. Psychologically, we know what that difference is. We're more engaged, we create a stronger relationship, a number of other things. And it turns out what those studies showed is that those differences carry over into the world of technology. So when we create something like the robot that's behind me there, one of the key features is those eyes that can look at you. Uh, and the whole reason for that, it's not a gimmick, uh, but we actually get those psychological effects of face-to-face -face interaction. You know, we're not designing this to look like you or me, right? It doesn't look like a person. No one's going to mistake this for a human. So it's not like we're playing tricks on people. It's very clear what this is and what, what it isn't. But using some of these aspects of psychology, like the eyes that can look at you and move around while you're moving in front of her, uh, really makes a difference. And so, you know, that was one of the foundational pieces. But the work over the next several years I did at MIT was really building on that psychology and trying to better understand how we connect with people over time. Dr. Corey Kidd, CEO at Catalia Health, helping us connect with robots to feel better. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today about Maybu. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work. How can they do that? Yeah, three quick ways. You know, feel free to connect with me on Twitter. I'm at Corey K, C O R Y K. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn fairly easily. And our company website is CataliaHealth.com. So if you're interested either as a customer or as a patient who'd like to try one of these out, we're always looking for people. Thanks again. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Or maybe go to my website, TanyaHall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.